Genesis 13. I don't know if I'm going to read much of this at the moment. So I've still got a bit to get through. We'll see how we go. In Genesis 13, I'll tell you the story. It's the story of Abraham and Lot. Okay? So, so Lot went with Abraham when he left um, uh, Caldur and go, go, go through Egypt. And they came to the Negev. And, and they, they, the man, they increased. They got, they got um, abundantly blessed in the Lord. Okay? And Lot was blessed and Abraham or Abram was blessed. They were okay, but their employees weren't. The employees of Lot and the employees of Abraham were <laughs> fighting and battling and knocking at each other and fighting over which pastures and my sheep got here first and yours can take a hike and, you know, my camel's a priority and all this stuff, right? So to avoid the problem, Abraham went to Lot. He's a man of God. Boy, is he a man of God. And he went to Lot and he said, nephew, you choose, look and choose the best land that you want, the best of wherever you want, and I'll take the rest. Man, he's a man of God because I don't think I would have done that. Lot only increased and did it because of Abraham, but that's why Abraham's a man of God, okay? And Lot, of course, chose the best. He chose the best position, the best uh, watering, and Abraham got what was left. And it wasn't very good. You know, <clears throat> there's a lesson to learn. In God's economy, you can lose everything and he will just increase. Job lost everything and got double back. Abraham lost everything. He actually lost the best pastures, the best waters, the best uh, positions of land, as in, in protectedness. He lost all of that. He lost everything and had to set out again. You haven't thought about it like that, have you? Abraham lost, but he gained. He was blessed. Okay, so we're going to look at verse, so after this has happened with Lot and, and uh, they had words, if you look at verses 10 and 11, Lot lifted up his eyes, saw the valley of the Jordan, it was well watered and that's where he chose. So Lot chose for himself the valley of the Jordan and Lot journeyed eastward and they separated. Okay, now look at verse 14, very important. The Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, now lift up your eyes. What eyes? Which one? That's right. Lift up your spiritual eyes. Look from the place where you are. Who's somewhere that they don't want to be right now? Look from the place where you are. Northward, eastward, southward, westward. Look with faith, with spiritual eyes. For all the land which you see, spiritual eyes, I will give to you and to your descendants forever. Now, Abraham is in the Old Testament. This is an Old Testament example. But can you see the correlation to the spirit that I'm showing you? I promise you, there has been multiple times in my life, I promise you it will happen to you. You'll be in a place of loss in God's economy. I call it God's economy because it's how God does things. Okay? And he'll say, look, look with faith and look north, look east, look south, look west and I'll give it to you. If your eyes are fixed on Jesus and not in the natural, amen? Because I, I, I would think that all of Lot, uh, Abram's employees and wives and servants and was like, oh, what's going to happen now? We've lost everything. But God says different. Okay, continuing, verse 15. Uh, sorry, verse 17. Arise. Now, now there's something else that's got to happen. Hang on. We've seen it. Now what has to happen? Arise. Walk about the land through its length and breadth, for I will give it to you. So after you've looked and have faith, you have to have action. Okay? Otherwise, we're stuck in those places where we're... Um, the world is invaded 
or our past has invaded negativity and, and, and um, despair. Or we're in the place where the devil has invaded and brought you back into bondage. Or we're in the place where just the flesh has invaded and said, I can't do it. Nope. You have to walk it out. So what do you see by faith? Young people, husbands and wives, I hope. You know, by faith, eyes of faith, not eyes in the natural. Don't start looking in the natural. Be careful. Let's stick to where, what we're supposed to be. Are your eyes of faith and spiritual eyes glued on Jesus that it doesn't matter what comes to you in the natural, you're stuck there? That's the best. That's where I'm staying. You know, I was trying to explain to Mr. Mr. Tami, Tani, yet last night how Bruce and I came to know each other and, and be in the Lord. And he's reading it going, wow, okay, where did it get? <laughs> because it's a testimony of the Lord. Amen. Eyes fixed on him brings every other blessing. Eyes fixed, because Isabella said, Matthew 6, no, Scarlet said, Matthew 6, 6, 6, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and then all these things will be added unto you. Amen. Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness actually and all these things will be added unto you. All right. God gave me a vision, a dream. And I know it was him because it was impossible at the time. I was reading Ezekiel and out of one verse, he spoke to me and said, you'll be my, build my people, you'll preach the gospel. And I went, okay. From that moment, I had a burning, burning place in me. I can't get away from it. I, I don't care if you come visit me. I don't care if I go and visit you. I'll be teaching you. Because there's, there's a calling and a birth in me that's him. Why? Because my spiritual eyes and ears receive the, the invasion of the Lord. Amen? We've been talking, Brother George and I have been talking a lot about your calling. Be invaded. Go and search for the lost coin and be invaded by the Lord. Amen? All right. God will show you possibilities for you. I've, been, I've just talked about Abraham. I, and I've straight away shown you the correlation for you. The trouble is we read the word of God or hear the word of God and think, oh, yeah, that's for them. No, I'm telling you now, God will show you the possibilities for you. You have to receive them. He will show you the, his word for you. He will show you his will for you. He will show you his dream for you. Are you receiving it? Are you hearing it? Are you walking in it? Amen? All right. God wants to heal you. Put your hand up. God wants to raise you up. Put your hand up. God wants to promote you. Keep your hand up. See if you can. God wants to bless you. Keep your hand up. Do you understand? What we do is we go, oh, that's not me. Put your hand up and receive that because it's for you. Amen? I'm in Christ. You're in Christ. We have the same promise. I'm in Christ. You're in Christ. We have the same blessing. I'm in Christ. You're in Christ. We have the same spirit. I'm in Christ. You're in Christ. We have the same faith. I'm in Christ. You're in Christ. We have the same co-heirs. See, it's for you. I'm hitting something deliberately because, because I know, and, and I haven't got this written, the Lord's telling me to hit this and I hit it again because I know people are going, you, my sweet people, my, my, my wonderful, blessed family, you are going, oh no, that's Pastor Brian and Brother George. Oh no. No, it's for you, beloved. We are the same. I am no greater than you. You are no greater than me, but I'm no greater than you. Amen. Can I hear amen? All right. Okay, this is the bit I've been waiting for. Seven, possess the land. Now, when you do a study on the word possess, you'll be surprised. I, I did a bit of a study on it. and I was quite surprised. Because you can see and hear in the Lord... But you still, they still had to go and possess the promised land. I found that very interesting because the Lord says, I've read it heaps. He says, um, 
Actually, we will turn to Deuteronomy. We'll do it right now. Deuteronomy 1. He says, the land I give to you, okay? But then he still says, go up and possess the land, all right? While you're turning there. The word possess means ownership, of course, but it means this. You might be surprised. To seize, to gain, to obtain the occupation of, to dispossess the current occupants and possess the land. Isn't that interesting? Deuteronomy, just after Numbers, if you haven't got there, I'm still trying to turn a page. Ugh. Got it. Right, Deuteronomy 1, verse 20. I said to you, you have come to the hill country of the Amorites, who's got ites, you know, which the Lord our God is about to give us. Does yours say that? Which the Lord our God is about to give us. See, the Lord your God has placed the land before you. Go up, take possession. As the Lord, the God of your fathers, has spoken to you, do not fear or be dismayed. We have to possess the promises. You have to possess it. Okay? Then all of you approached me and said, let us send men. I told you the story about this. That's right. Here we go. Okay? And bring us back word. This was the spies. And the thing pleased me. And I took 12 of your men and they turned up, went to the hill country, spied it. Then they came all back with the fruit of the land in their hands, the milk and the honey. And they reported to us a good land, which the Lord our God is about to give us this is very important say it with me give us okay yet you were not willing verse 26 to go but rebelled against the command of the lord your god this is super important you will be told to possess now remember we're talking about uh the wilderness is being our mind, our will and emotions and the promised land being the promises of the Lord and the victory in Jesus Christ and walking in it, right? And the invasion and habitation of the living God. Okay, let's, let's be clear. They were on the border. They were at the border and refused and rebelled. How many times has the Lord taken you up to the border of something in your mind, your will or your emotions and said, honey, I want you to touch this and get rid of it right now. Go and possess it. And you're going, oh, God, I really, really God. How many times? Resentment or fear or unfor unforgiveness. Do you know how easy it is to forgive? I promise you it's so much easier than hatred and the poison of resentment. When God tells us, go, I give it to you. Touch it now. Go. There's power and his grace propelling it pushing it, motivating it, fueling you to do that and to be free. Have you ever thought of that? Have you ever touched that place in your mind and thought about it? When the Lord tells you, he, I promise you, he's putting his grace behind it because he is grace. Okay, but when we rebel, just like the Israelites, when we refuse, so this is what happens. So the Israelites refuse. Went, oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. So there's the rebellion, da, 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 da. They see all the ramifications of Korah and all the people that were with him. I can't remember all their names, but anyway. And the earth opened up and swallowed them and there was all this judgment on the, on, the, on the camp of the Israelites. Okay, and then they turned around a little while later and went, oh, I think we'll go up and take the promised land now. The Lord went, don't go up because I'm not with you. When I gave it to you and commanded you, you didn't go. Go up now and you will fail, which they did. Go when the Lord tells you. Stay when he tells you, but go when he tells you. Amen? Because that cost them 38 years and death in the wilderness. Wow. Wow. Amen? Are you with me? Okay, so here's the lesson. Don't ignore it. Learn. Learn now. When the voice of the Lord speaks to you, obey. Amen? If he shows you something in your life that's to go, he's already enabled you. 
I understand your flesh can scream. I've sobbed for days over things, weeks over things. I understand, but obey. Obey. Renew your mind and allow the wildernesses of your soul to be invaded, inhabited by God. Amen? Possess the promised land. Go up and take on the ice because God's giving it to you. Amen? Go forth. Walk forward. We need to leave our past. Can you see how, how destructive your past is? I actually didn't, didn't put it together like that until the Lord spoke it to me like that, that the Israelites were hanging on to their past. And yet I knew that because I couldn't get... Egypt left Israel. Uh, sorry, Israel left Egypt, but Egypt didn't leave Israel. We let's be careful that we leave sin behind. Amen? Let it be out of you in the name of Jesus. Don't return back to it. Leave your past, leave your habits, leave your thinking, your thinking behind. Just not old thinking, your thinking. Because it's not just old thinking, it's your thinking every day. We have to challenge it and make sure it is God's thinking. Amen? Romans 12, 2, remember, renew your mind. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed and renewed in your mind. We need to be enabled by the grace of God to confront and change your thinking. Go when God says go. Amen? So habitation. Habitation. I'm putting a new place on it now today, haven't we? Habitation is not just the spirit. That's the beginning. That's only the front door. Habitation is your soul. That the Lord inhabits, I, I, I like the word invade because it's so confronting, all right? But let's let the Lord inhabit our mind, inhabit our emotions, inhabit our will. That's when you know you're in habitation. Amen? Amen? 